Well, hi everybody, and uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, allergic reactions. We're going to talk about uh, Benadryl, diphenhydramine, and epinephrine uh, in relation to anaphylaxis and kind of a pre-course review. I'm Dwayne Cattell, one of the regional paramedic educators, and this is Christine Hardy, one of the other regional paramedic educators. So the learning objectives for this webinar, um, we'll describe the pathophysiology of an allergic reaction, discuss the pharmacology of the medications, appropriately apply the medical directive, and we'll discuss how anaphylaxis may cause cardiac arrest, and we'll discuss the treatment of cardiac arrest in that setting. Okay, um, so just kind of a quick review on uh, the pathophysiology of an allergic reaction. Remember, it's an antigen antibody reaction. There's some type of foreign uh, protein, uh, the antigen, which uh, is either injected, absorbed, ingested, or inhaled. So when this foreign protein enters the body, it causes a mass reaction. Um, and the majority of the time, these allergic reactions are ingested. That is the most common. Um, and as a result of that, the mast cells secrete uh, huge amounts of histamine. And this results in bronchoconstriction, uh, vasodilation, uh, increased gastric acids, GI motility. It also increases uh, GI edema properties. So just talking a little bit about the pharmacology uh, of uh, diphenhydramine, uh, your Benadryl there. So it is classified as a histamine blocker and it prevents uh, more histamine uh, from binding to those specific receptor sites. It helps to minimize and reduce the signs and symptoms associated with a localized allergic reaction from histamine release. Um, it binds to the muscarinic receptors within the brain and remember muscarinic slows everything down and hopefully by preventing the release or at least blocking the histamine from being released it will reverse uh, the vasodilation, the bronchoconstriction, hypotension and the tachycardia. Um, and always taking into account that diphenhydramine, like with any medication, uh, they can and it will have a synergistic effect or a, um, a compounding effect when combined with other medications. So we'll now discuss the pharmacology of diphenhydramine. Um, its onset when given IM is approximately 15 to 30 minutes. And if it's given IV, that will be slightly quicker, obviously. The duration is between 3 to 12 hours in length. The side effects, as Duane mentioned, uh, are sedative so and could cause nausea, dizziness. Allergy to Benadryl is rare. Um, when giving the medication IV, um, it should be pushed slowly, and we just mean at a moderate pace. Um, you just don't want to be pushing it extremely rapid. Again, it helps to re relieve the symptoms. Um, in a mild allergic reaction, diphenhydramine is the first medication you'll be administering. So, continuing on with the administration of uh, diphenhydramine Benadryl. So, it can be given either IM or IV roots. And like Christine alluded to, just, you know, we've been giving this drug for a few years now. You don't really have to jam it real fast. Just nice and easy, slow and steady wins the race when you're injecting. Okay, whether IM or IV. And just noted, it does not have to be diluted to administer intravenous root. Uh, if you have diluted intravenous root, um, you can continue to do so, but it is not required. So let's look at some dosing uh, with calculating Benadryl diphenhydramine administration. So for primary care paramedics as well as advanced care paramedics, uh, less than 25 kilograms, there is no dosing now. There has uh, been no significant evidence that less than 25 kilograms is going to make a clinical difference. Between 25 and 49 kilograms, either IV or IM, it's going to be 25 milligrams, uh, 50 kilograms and greater it's going to be uh, 50 milligrams uh, IV or IM. Uh, once again, you do not need to dilute the Benadryl to give IV. Uh, there is no patch required for administration of Benadryl. And the only contraindication for Benadryl administration is uh, allergy or sensitivity to the drug. So here is the chart for your reference uh, directly out of your handbook.
So administrating the Benadryl. Uh, depending on what your service carries, uh, the Benadryl is generally is supplied in 50 milligrams in one ml. Um, it can be supplied in an ampule or it can be supplied in a uh, single dose vial form. So always ensure uh, you know your, your rights of drugs. Depending on which book you read or uh, you know there's six to eight rights. So the right patient receives the right dosage or the right drug via the right route at the right time. They're always entitled to the right to know. They have the right to refuse as long as they meet capacity and they're always entitled to the right documentation. Um, so then you would prep the site. Uh, swab the site, uh, making sure the patient is aware of that you're going to be administering this drip medication to them and it's going to help them. You've ensured all the rights, no allergies, that sort of thing. You'll pop the top off your uh, vial or you'll crack your ampule. If you do pop the top off the vial, it's very important to swab the uh, rubber stopper and then you will pull out your medication, uh, your appropriate dosage, and if you're giving it through the intravenous, you can just go ahead and inject. Okay, uh, it does not have to be diluted, uh, the Benadryl, if you're giving an intravenous route, and if you're giving intramuscular, um, make sure that you, uh, you go into the muscle, your proper uh, intramuscular injection techniques, aspirate back for blood, if there's no blood, go ahead and inject, and dispose of your sherps, uh, and make sure your sherps safe. I should have performed that administration on you today <laughs> for the webinar. So moving on to epinephrine administration, um, it's important to note that this is the first drug to be given to your patient in the setting of anaphylaxis. We are delivering it um, intramuscular, intramuscular only, so you will not be giving the patient um, IV epinephrine. Um, if this patient has a systemic response, um, we're looking at anaphylaxis. So signs and symptoms may include wheezing, uh, generalized edema. Yeah. Uh, uticaria could be a symptom, but you will not be administering epinephrine uh, for just utericaria on its own. Uh, low blood pressure, um, angioedema, I think yeah. we already said. Striderous. Through. Striderous. Um, the dosing is 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram, rounded to the nearest 0 0.5 milligrams. Our maximum single dose is 0.5 milligrams, and we will only be administering it once. So once again, uh, this uh, comes directly out of your uh, paramedic pocketbook. Okay, um, and you'll note in there that it has pediatric and adult auto injector. Those are like the epi pens. If your service does not carry those, um, that's you will use what the service gives you. So if the service gives you the one to one thousand little glass ampules, that's what you. That is what you will use when you're on scene. And also, if the patient had their own auto injector, you would be using your epinephrine from your bag. Yeah, that's use your use epinephrine. your own drugs. Right. Use your own drugs. So something that's new with these medical directive, directives includes the patient who's VSA from an anaphylactic reaction. Um, we can now administer epinephrine to the anaphylaxis patient who presents to us uh, VSA. The dosing will be the same, 0 0.01 milligrams per kilogram, and again, it would be administered IM to this patient, and the single dose is, um, maximum single dose is 0.5 milligrams. And when we stress about, this, it's not just every VSA patient, I mean, there has to be a clear history that they have, they are in cardiac arrest as a result of a, a, a current anaphylactic reaction. It has to be very clear. So this scenario may be you're called for a school for an unconscious child, for example, and the child has been exposed to peanuts, has a known peanut allergy, presents to you as if they appear anaphylactic, and they are also VSA. So a few things to consider, some special considerations, that uh, anaphylaxis or allergic reaction is variable in presentation. Um, these anaphylactic patients can also be wheezy. Um, so because they are wheezy, absolutely, Ventolin, if there's no contraindications like an allergy to Ventolin or anything like that, then go ahead and administer Ventolin. Uh, always trying to start with the meter dose inhaler um, with the little spacer first. That is the best way uh, to get that medication into them. And if they're less than 25 kilograms, it's going to be 600 micrograms, so one puff every four breaths times six. Or um, if they can't follow the directions and there's no contraindications like a fever or an outbreak, um, then you can go and utilize the nebulized 
uh, Ventolin at 2.5 milligrams. And if they're greater than 25 kilograms, uh, the dose is 800 uh, micrograms, one puff every four breaths times eight, um, with the uh, the small uh, puffer and the arrow chamber, the spacer. Um, and once again, if they can't follow the directions, um, and as long as there's no contraindications, i.e. a fever greater than 38 degrees or an outbreak declared by the medical officer of health, then you could choose to go to uh, five milligram nebulized uh, ventilin treatments. And remember, you're allowed three doses, um, and there is that time frame where we have to wait after the completion of the dose, uh, five to, minimum of five minutes. So it's five to 15 minutes waiting between. Let the ventilin do its work. So again, here's your um, directive from the paramedic handbook for your reference. So in conclusion, in wrapping up the webinar, um, it's important to remember that epinephrine is the first drug to be administered in the setting of an anaphylactic reaction. Um, diphenhydramine can be administered in minor allergic reactions. So say your patient's just presenting with hives, it would be appropriate to administer diphenhydramine um, and secondary for anaphylaxis. So you would basically, it would be epinephrine and then di diphenhydramine. Um, salbutamol can also be utilized if your patient's showing signs of bronchoconstriction, such as uh, increased expiratory phase or um, you auscultate and hear wheezing. So this ends this webinar series. Um, if you have any questions, you can please contact your uh, regional paramedic educators at the emails uh, listed below.